Hello again, good to see you. Uh, some of you have been waiting a couple weeks for this video, so uh, finally I have a soccer betting strategy for you. Uh, thank you to those of you who sent uh, some messages. It's good to know that there are some people who are interested in what, uh, what I'm publishing here, and hopefully it's of some uh, use to you as well. Now, as this is a soccer strategy that I'm talking about today, I thought it's only fair that I should wear something soccer related, and in English soccer, I'm a Wolves fan, so uh, there we go, my Wolves top. Probably put some of you offside with that, but so, you know, if you'd asked me a couple years ago, would the Wolves make the quarterfinals of the FA Cup or would the uh, Wolves be in the top half of the English Premier League ladder, I wouldn't have thought it was ever going to happen, but here we are. Interesting times. Uh, thankfully, for this strategy, you don't have to follow Wolves or bet on Wolves. Uh, we're actually looking at the correct score market. Now, the correct score market, like most uh, soccer markets, uh, takes note of the full-time result at the end of regular time plus injury time. Uh, no extra time, no penalty shootouts, nothing like that, just regular time plus any injury time. Uh, and I know that for some people who aren't familiar with soccer betting, this can be uh, slightly confusing because in a lot of other sports, extra time does count for most bets. And indeed, here in Australia, when the uh, Matildas, the uh, women's soccer team, made the World Cup, so a lot of people here bet on them to win in the quarterfinal, and it was a nil all draw at, uh, at uh, full time. It, went, it ended up going to penalties, and... The Matildas won it there, but because it was a nil-all draw at full time, people who'd bet on the Matildas to win lost the bet, and they couldn't really understand why, because they didn't really read the uh, the fine print, and they didn't really notice, I suppose, that a draw was an option on a match that, you know, if, if the extra time and penalties were to be taken into account, could not possibly end in a draw. So that it's useful to remember that the correct score market, uh, just like the, the match result market, uh, it, it does look at the standard time plus injury time. There's no extra time, uh, no penalty shootouts. So with that in mind, let's have a look. Now, um, I started off this strategy with uh, 50 cent base staking. And uh, you can see in that first, uh, that first week there, it, um, it did pretty well for itself. It made $16, roughly, in profit, which was more than I expected it to do. The uh, second week, I upped the staking to a $2.50 base stake, uh, and that did uh, quite remarkable results, even though we are, have been in a period with a few less European domestic competitions because there has been FA Cup and things like that. It still managed to make... Uh, $50 worth of profit over that week. So if we were to put those two together and work with them as uh, as if they had had the same amount, so if they were, it was 250 uh, base stake for both weeks combined, isn't that a nice graph? $130 of uh, profit if we had been doing $2.50 base staking across both weeks. Now, let me take you into the, uh, into the, into the software, the uh, LayPro Football software, and uh, I'll show you how this is working. So here we are in the LayPro 88 Football bot. This is another one of the bots from Steve and Michael that's using the LayPro staking system. Uh, in this case, what we're betting on is the correct score market on soccer matches, and it's pretty much soccer matches right around the world. There are there are teams I wouldn't even begin to want to try to pronounce. It's just, but you know, they're they're all all matches all around the world. You know, 24 hours a day sometimes, and it's it's interesting which uh, which leagues you end up betting on. But uh, it, it it's a pretty good system overall. Now. What I'm doing here is something that's based vaguely on a strategy that Steve and Michael provide in the manual for the software. They have three strategies in there, and I've tested all three of them. They all work. 
they all do turn a profit. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different there. Primarily, I'm looking at a lower odds range, but also whereas they tend to use just one tab for lay pro staking, I like to use multiple tabs, uh, but then I do keep a close eye on the tabs to cut them off when they hit a, uh, a profit target and leave them running if they're in a recovery cycle to, to reach that profit target. Um, I tend to find the lower odds range just a little bit friendlier with the lay pro staking because if you have odds of under $8 and you have a loss, you can recover all of that loss and turn that into a profit within the recovery cycle, which is quite handy. Now, in this case, what we're looking at here, uh, the bot's been running for the last week. Um, so it's been running since I upped the base stake to $2.50. And you can see that the $50.56 profit there. Uh, the strategy that we're running here is looking at, uh, at the favorite uh, outcome in the correct score market if the home team is heavily favored to win. So if the home team is looking at odds of between 130 and 180 to win the match on the match odds market, then whatever the favorite is in the correct score market, that's what we're going to bet on. A few other bits of qualifying criteria. We want there to be at least $5,000 in the match odds market. Uh, we want there to be at least $2,000 matched in the correct score market. And we're not going to place a bet if the favorite in the correct score market is a one all draw. Now, I can't say that it's, it seems very likely that if the home team is heavily favored, that a one all draw is going to be the favored result in the correct score market, but it could happen, I suppose. So let's have a look at uh, what we're seeing in the tabs. So if we go and look in tab one to start with, um, what I'm doing with the tabs is each tab I'm looking to get the equivalent of two winning bets in profit. So a base stake of $2.50, if, if uh, the bet is successful, that's what we should make as our profit. So I'm looking for $5 of profit in each tab. In this case, tab one started off really well. It had um, it had two wins in a row. So I was able to stop that tab straight away, just turned it off up here, which then meant the tab two took the majority of activity. Once again, uh, it got two in a row. So it was good. And you can see it, tab one and tab two, these uh, both were on the 16th. Tab three, again, the 16th. And again, it only took two bets to reach the uh, $5 target. Tab four, it took a little bit longer. It started off with a winning bet, uh, then it took a loss. Now, the selection for this one, Ipswich versus uh, Sheffield Wednesday, the selection there was any other home win. So in the correct score market, that's the home team winning with a score of four points or more. So it could be 4-0 or 4-1 or 5-2 or 6-3 or 72 goals to 8 or something. Anywhere where the home team wins and the home team has scored four goals or more. Uh, a lot of the time that works out well because a lot of the time when that is the favourite, the home team actually struggles to get anywhere near four goals. It seems that uh, with the correct score market, because there are so many options, it's a really good one for, for laying. And uh, it, it seems to me just a little bit with the correct score market that people are very good at working out which team is most likely to win and probably even working out to an extent how many goals roughly they'll probably score. The wild card with it tends to be how well the opposition will play. So if the if we know who the favourite is, we can probably work out roughly how well they'll play, but how well will the opposition do? 
that's why the correct score market tends to work pretty well for laying because there are so many options from you know nil all draw to one nil to uh, nil one to one all to two nil two one etc you know just so many options so we had a loss here as the second bet uh, that was a, a bit of a steep loss lost seventeen dollars there took us down to minus 14.50 in the tab but then obviously we increased the staking and that helps to speed up the recovery process you can see it recovered pretty quickly it didn't take too long for it to reach five dollars fifty three in profit and so I turned it off there tab five was a straight two wins tab six was straight two wins um, Match stake there, $2.53. I think the bot had a little bit of trouble getting match right on $2.50, and so it, um, it just did a little bit of work to get matched there and ended up staking $2.53. Tab 7, again, two wins to get there. Tab 8, would have been two wins to get there, but uh, by the time I saw that result, the next match had already started. So I let it run, and it got to 7.50 so all good tab 9 much the same thing uh, in fact looking at the times on those they oh separate days okay um, but yeah same thing uh, and we haven't had a bet in tab 10 yet on a uh, typical week with uh, plenty of matches when you've got most of the European domestic leagues running uh, I'd expect you'd probably fill these 10 tabs quite easily within a week. In this case, it's been running for a week and not quite managed to fill the 10 tabs uh, because there has been fewer European matches and a lot of the um, a lot of the volume in this does come from European domestic leagues. So when those are in an international break, it tends to slow down just a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of South American matches and a lot of Major League Soccer out of the US and on the weekend there's some Australian A-League among other things um, and there's some uh, there's plenty of um, usually plenty of Indonesian matches as well but uh, it does tend to slow down just a little bit when you don't have those European domestic leagues but it's still I mean <laughs> $50 profit in a week in what was actually a slower week is is nothing to sneeze at at all so that's um, it, it's a pretty simple strategy but it it works works quite well now uh, I have the stop loss here set at a hundred dollars I've actually allocated a hundred dollars to this strategy the two dollars fifty base stake well, where was our, our we only really had one loss in this week I think from the look of it and that was uh, $17. Now, yeah, sure, you could have two, maybe three in a row. I haven't seen it happen. You have to expect something like that would happen at some stage. Um, but uh, $2.50 off the, the $100 that's allocated to the strategy seems pretty, uh, pretty safe to me. If I just have a look through just to confirm that and um, yeah that one loss that one loss is the only loss in the whole week I, I, I don't know what else to say really when you've got a bunch of bets through the week and only one loss uh, that that seems pretty good to me so that's uh, that's what I'm doing here I, I could if I wanted to I could set the bot to stop when it reaches a profit overall and if I was doing that I probably would set it to the equivalent of 10 tabs so I probably would set it to uh, $50 if I'm looking at $5 per tab and the equivalent of 10 tabs would be $50 we would actually have reached it here I would be stopping it clearing the results restarting and uh, probably adjusting the staking for whatever I've adjusted the balance of the strategy to but uh, considering I am keeping a close eye on the tabs there's no real need to set the bot to stop by itself there that said I could 
uh, I could very easily, if I was going to cut it back to just one tab, I could set this to, to stop at a set profit. The difficulty, I think, with um, running just one tab, and this is one of the reasons I like to run multiple tabs with this strategy, is on weekends you get a bunch of matches at a time. So if we have a look here, for example, uh, on the 16th, tab one had a 1.14 a.m. and a 3.59 a.m. bet. Tab two had a 2.59 and a 6.29. I think tab three... 429, 659. You can see there's a bit of overlap of these matches. I think it's worth, when you don't have a lot of volume through the week, it's worth trying to get the volume where you can get it. So having the multiple tabs available to take advantage of that volume uh, is useful, rather than losing out on that and having to hope that the midweek results get you towards profit. It would be a bit slower if you were just running in one tab. You'd probably still make a decent profit. Uh, it just probably wouldn't be as much. And then if you had a loss, as we did here, it would take a little bit longer to recover. In this case, that loss happened on the 17th, and it took until the 18th. If that was through the middle of the week rather than the weekend, that would, uh, that would take a little bit longer. But if you're more comfortable with running one tab and not running the risk of having losses to recover in multiple tabs, that's also a way to do it. I like to do it this way, where I'm running the multiple tabs and taking advantage of that weekend volume. But, you know, how you want to do it is, is entirely up to you. And I always suggest that rather than just copying exactly what someone else is doing, take a look at what someone else is doing and adapt it to what works for you and what you're comfortable with. Uh, and, and that's what I do as well. I, as I said, this is based on a strategy that Steve and Michael have in the manual that comes with the software when you buy it. Um, but I've adapted it to the way that works for me and what I'm comfortable with. And I think that when you've got people adjusting their settings to what's comfortable for them, everyone starts to get better results because if everyone's trying to bet on exactly the same thing at exactly the same time, there's just not going to be the liquidity in, in any market to handle that, and results are going to be a little bit worse. But if everyone's doing something a little bit different, but you know along the same lines, then I think that's when everyone starts to benefit. So that's the soccer strategy I've been working on. Hopefully it's of some interest and benefit to you. I'm certainly happy with the results, so hopefully it's been worth the wait. I certainly think it probably has been, but... Uh, a good thing about it is it, it doesn't have a lot of volume, so there's not a huge amount of uh, undulation in the in the, the balance of the uh, account with this one. Um, and that also means that it's a little bit easier for it to recover losses in a fairly timely manner. Uh, and it seems to work reasonably well when there's plenty of matches and when there's not so many matches. So that's, that's a good thing as well. Uh, you do have to be a little bit patient with it because obviously you get a lot more activity on weekends than you do during the week. And on weekends, you, you may only get a few bets a day and sometimes you go a weekday or two without a bet. But overall, it, it works. And that's the main thing. I think if it works, it doesn't matter too much whether there's a lot of volume or not, just as long as it works. So anyway, there's a link below to the LayPro football software and uh, I'm sure someone's going to ask at once at some stage if you're in Canberra in Australia why are you following Wolves of all the teams you could follow eh, it's mainly because of the dogs more than anything else my, my two dogs it's that's the main reason there's no particular other reason I was following uh, Wolves before they got into the Premier League so uh continue to follow them since. It's been an interesting ride. I uh, dare say it's probably a good thing I don't bet on them to win because I'm not sure that that would be a very profitable strategy in the long run. Anyway, that is uh, that for now. Uh, see you again soon with uh, some more punting advice of some sort. And until then, good luck on the punt.